www.thepodcastnetwork.org. So today we are making an iced strawberry latte. It's going to be an entirely vegan latte, no dairy whatsoever. Uh, what we're rolling with is some fresh strawberries. This is going to be part of step one. We're going to get these cut up, muddle them into our glass, and then we're just going to add some nice hand flavored ice, a little bit of oat milk on top, get a nice shot pulled, and then uh, we're going to make our strawberry cold foam. Hopefully I don't cut my fingers off. My favorite part is when the strawberry just kind of explodes on you while you're sitting here trying to do this. Great part is you don't have to go to the gym afterwards. Probably about an ounce, ounce and a half. Awesome. Make sure to flavor it with your hands beforehand. I'll let that sit in there. And coming up, we're going to go ahead and pour in our oat milk. I like to pour the oat milk in and let it sit while I do everything else. We're going to see it mix in with a lot of the flavors, the strawberry in there. And while we're pulling our shot, getting our cold foam ready, this is going to mix up real well. Turn a nice light pink color over time. We're going to be doing geometry from Onyx Coffee Labs. We're going with this one because of the berry notes that we get out of this. A little bit of an Earl Grey muted flavor, nice round flavor, a little bit of sweetness from the honeysuckle. The stone fruit is very, very, very mild on this one. So this is going to do real well in a nice milk-based strawberry drink. About 16 grams. Take one out. There we go. We'll probably lose about a tenth or two to retention on the grinder anyways. Our poor man's Ross droplet technique. Just take some water, let your finger up, and we're going to stir the beans with it. So this is going to help cut down on the retention from the grinder. We have a cheap grinder, so we want to cut down on the static as much as possible. It means we're getting more of the coffee out and we're reducing the clumps. And then we'll toss it in the hopper. Powdered gold. And then, once we get that kind of distributed out, we tap it. This gets rid of the air pockets between the grounds. Make sure we're getting as even of an, even of an extraction as possible. Look at our fun little paper towel that I used to keep my wife on my happy side. We didn't lose that much out of that out of that pour, so not too bad. Go ahead and shoot for a nice even tamp. Goal here is if you end up with an unlevel bed of coffee, you end up with a lot of channeling that happens. Ideally, you want to achieve about 20 pounds per square inch of force. That being said, this is again a very low end machine. So it doesn't have the pressure needed to handle something like that. So we go with a lighter tamp and a coarser grind. It's a good looking one. For a good cold foam, you wanna shoot for about 20 grams of your milk. We overdid it a little bit, that's fine. And then, since we did about 30 grams of that, we're gonna do about 45 grams of heavy whipping cream. Just to keep the ratio consistent. Make sure we aren't botching this batch of cold foam. Trying this out for the first time today. Strawberry syrup from Tarani one of the best coffee syrup companies out there they put out a great flavor We're going with about 20 grams Ooh, on the nose my gosh it's way and time your shots 
this machine being a lower quality, having to go with a coarser grind, a lower dose, you end up um, having to recognize that your shots are going to come out quick. They're going to be like what a lot of people refer to as turbo shots, so we're hacking it a little bit. We're going to cut it at about 18 seconds. Sweet. Bright. Yeah, very full body. Onyx Coffee Lab never lies. And we ended up with just roughly two ounces of espresso right at the end of the day. Coming in at about 55 grams, about 1.9 ounces. So yeah, just shy of two ounces. Got a double shot. Got our bar spoon. You could drink it like that and that'd be real pretty. But we are not done yet. So, again, about 20 grams of milk, 30 grams of heavy cream, 20 grams of our syrup. We're gonna get a good froth going for about two minutes. And the idea of a cold foam, it's the same with the crema, is that it's a scientific reaction because the milk and it, milk and espresso both have the same kind of surfactants in them. So when you go through a high pressure situation or an aeration situation, those surfactants create bubbles, they create a micro foam, and then they create like a nice layer of foam. And that's what that crema is on espresso. Very much the same concept with the cold foam is that milk on its own has a very high surfactant degree, but you just need to of give it that that physical push for the reaction my favorite part oh that that's a thing of beauty it tastes like you grew up in the 90s you had the strawberry wafer cookie as a kid Dead ringer. Dead ringer for a strawberry wafer cookie as a 